I personally feel that it's wrong to engage in sexual relations with an extraterrestrial. You see this flying saucer? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's talk the, about the woman for a second. The girl? Mm -hmm. Oh, God, she was beautiful. Oh, stark naked. Oh, my God. And very human. Very human looking. Mm -hmm. And what happened next? She bent over and embraced me. And hugged me. And they come like a thief in the night. And they steal from the body of a human, violating every human right imaginable. The next thing I know, this little gray alien was on her left. He was holding her hand. And he's telling me to forget. Forget what you just saw. And there will be a day of reckoning when they will take responsibility for their action because they have grossly underestimated the human spirit. My name is Lori McDonald. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist with TRIU Hypnotherapy. I do research in extraterrestrial abduction, and I specialize in regression work for abductees and contactees. I have had over a thousand extraterrestrial cases. My youngest has been seven years old. When a person comes and they know or suspect that they have had some type of alien encounter or an extraterrestrial abduction, often they express to me that they can feel there's something else there they just can't remember. So on the tip of their tongue, they can't access that memory. They come to me with, they've seen me in a dream, one man said that the ETs just up and up told them, and then gave him images of to find me. Through you hypnotherapy, I started here in Sacramento about five years ago. And I chose the name because my motivation and my intent in helping people was to allow them to find their true self, to find their authentic self. And I find that hypnotherapy is the most effective way to move into and out of your issues. What we're looking to do here is use an app on my phone that will detect any hidden cameras or microphones, and it will show us where they are so that we'll know if we're being filmed without our permission or being listened into without our consent. It was brought to my attention by one of my experiencers that uh, they felt that they had detected some form of listening device in my home during a group meeting. So you want to look into the obvious places where hidden cameras go uh, in a pen is a big one. Once every week and a half or so, I'll just do a quick sweep just to make sure, or when I have high profile celebrity experiencers come. We want to make sure that uh, their story is secure. We are clear. Sorry, that's just my rock and roll app. <laughs> For the last three years, I've really concentrated a, a good deal of my energy on creating a psychological profile of the extraterrestrials that the witnesses describe during a regression. The most common races that we see involved in the abduction phenomena are greys, various reptilians, and Pleiadian. Mantis beings are often spotted in the background. I want to make sure that I'm thorough because there's protocols that will give a person instruction on how to behave when you find yourself face to face, eye to eye, with an extraterrestrial or a non-human entity. My client today is John. He's a lifelong experiencer whose case involves personal relations with extraterrestrials and abduction. What brought me here is my experience with the Greys. It actually started when I was really just out of the crib. 
I got visited. But when I turned 17, well then, every night after that, from 10 o'clock to two in the morning, these UFOs started showing up. I've got lots of photos. I've drawn my own pictures of everything that has happened to me that I can remember, the dreams, the flying dreams, the nosebleeds, so damn many of them is unbelievable. There was an incident later. I stepped out to take the garbage out, and I think it was around two in the afternoon, and I had a 48 Plymouth sedan sitting over there and bought from an old couple. I always bought them old cars, beautiful old things. And I happened to look, glance up, and there was this UFO, and he was traveling, he was coming from the river, just on the treetops, just like you would be a car, just going real slow. Man, I dropped that garbage bag. I'm gonna get me a picture of this thing. I run over and I, I'm raising the camera up. There's a copy of the picture. You see that little black spot? That's what he left behind. Well, I had been kind of searching for a regressionist that I could trust, that I could tell my story to. You know, because a lot of people, oh yeah, it's just an illusion, you, you know. <laughs> I want to know if it's really the real truth. Is it just all an illusion? Hey, John. Nice oh, to Lord. see you again. Come with me? Yes, ma'am. John was referred to me. I was told that he had a very interesting uh, UFO case, and he's at a point in his life where he's ready. Uh, John, this is Diona. She's our sketch artist. Uh, this is John. He's not exactly a young man, so comes a time in your life where there are things that have been in your mind your entire life, and you just need to know. And so John is at that point, and we're going to do that regression and find out more details to his experiences. If you're ready, we'll go ahead and begin. So the first question is, have you ever felt that you were paralyzed without being able to move anything on your body other than your eyes? Yes. Have you ever seen a hooded figure? Yes, more than once. Before anybody comes to me for any type of session, I do an extensive intake interview, listening to the words that they use so that I can see what resonates in their consciousness so I can help them access their subconscious. Do you feel that you have any offspring yes. that are alien? Yes. Okay. So there's a part of you that I feels... Feel, I feel that real strongly. All right. Well, we can go ahead and begin a session. So I'm going to have you lay down here, get a pillow. You can leave your boots on or off. We'll begin the way I always begin. It's breathing in through the nose exhaling through the mouth. With each breath that you take, perhaps you can feel yourself relaxing more and more. As this energy reaches your feet, your entire body now enveloped in a warm cocoon of energy that protects you from any negative influence and all self-defeating thoughts. Now, John, I want you to allow the mind to travel back to a time when you were aware that the UFOs were coming. I want you to see that UFO in the mind as if you were right there. It's a silver disc. It's a silver disc? Yeah. Okay. It's a flying saucer. Flying saucer. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's not happening now. We're just remembering you're safe. Hold on. Okay, let's let's talk about the woman for a second. The girl? Mm -hmm. Oh God, she was beautiful. Oh, stark naked. Oh my God. And very human. Very human looking. Mm -hmm. And what happened next? She came right through the trailer wall. She bent over and embraced me and hugged me. The next thing I know, I'm watching her walk away. This little gray alien was on her left. He was holding her hand, and he was leading her back to the ship. And he's telling me to forget. Forget. Forget what you just saw. And I felt, I felt peaceful. And the next thing I knew, I woke up. I was hurting. I was hurting down in my groin. I was hurting real bad. 
and I pulled down my pants and looked, and the bruises were getting blacker. Take a deep breath now. <laughs> Exhale. <sighs> I'm scared. OK, you don't have to be scared. And they come like a thief in the night. And they steal from the body of a human, violating every human right imaginable by taking sperm and ovum and creating what they call a hybrid program. All right, so what these are, these are MRI splices of an adult male's brain. And uh, this particular client has had extraterrestrial interference, what you might say, his entire life. And what it is that he feels is an extraterrestrial implant is this speck right here. He believes that there is a radio frequency being emitted from this. And this is one of three extraterrestrial implants uh, that he feels that he has. Uh, the other two are in his leg. He had uh, requested that I sign legal paperwork with him that would give me permission to receive these abductions. Upon his demise, they'll be removed and turned over to me. We will be able to send these out to a laboratory that will do a, a full chemical compound analysis on these to let us know if they're terrestrial or extraterrestrial. I highly suspect that they are extraterrestrial. All of the things in our life can make you or break you. I had uh, an abusive, neglectful uh, home where I was put up for adoption. I wasn't raised. I raised myself. I had no relationship with my mother. I wouldn't have recognized her on the street. And when I was 50 years old, she called up and said, I have to tell you the story of your birth. I found out that my mom had experienced extraterrestrial contact for the entire nine months that she carried me. I guess that was my first experience. They often told her to not be afraid. They told her they wouldn't hurt her. They also told her they were only interested in her baby. It was hard for her. And I wish that at the time there were support groups like I run now. If she would have got the support that she needed, if she were heard, my life would have been different, her life would have been different. But she kept a secret for 50 years. So we're headed out to Hagen Park. It's a state park. There's where we'll meet uh, the group of people and begin our sky watch. Basically what we're doing there is ruling out uh, what we know until we're left with what we don't know. Thank you very much. So it has the atmosphere of a tailgate party and everybody in the group, experiencers, contactees, abductees, shares a common Steven. belief. Man, how you doing? It's good to see you. I just got back from some little UFO conference. Did you? There was a trip. Hi. We're Meeting people from Venus. And... Oh, well, you know how that goes. <laughs> you never know who you're going to run into. Everybody grab a chair. <laughs> We'd like to create a, a common thought process. We'd like to come together sort of on the same vibe. What we're looking to do is attract a higher frequency UFO or extraterrestrial. Uh, we are open to that. We all are from different circles, and it's good to get together. And we're and kind of share. like a family here. I'm excited. I'm so excited to be a part of this. Last night, I got on the subject of alien implantation. Yeah. And I guess in the 90s, there was a doctor who would operate for free to remove these little things from people. Well, that actually happened to me. It's scary. Um, I had, like, I found, like, a little lump on my foot. If you go on Google Earth, you'll see these strange circular shapes all over. And there's no label. You're going, what are they hiding? What is below those black circles? I had surgery the next day and they flatlined me. They gave me too much uh, anesthetic, and I've got this long tape of where my heart had stopped. Well, there was three of us, um, let's see, it was 
June 20th, 2015. It was 2 o'clock in the morning. My friend and I just came back from a free energy conference in Idaho. And I swear to God, there's a lot of ancient pyramids all the way. And I had to stop many times, and I saw lines and pyramids lining up. Within just a couple seconds, this humongous triangular shaped craft was just over us. And so they woke me up when they resuscitated me, asked me all these questions, and I'm trying to ask them, what did you take out? They discarded it without me ever being able to see what it was. But anyway, so it's nice to get together with my friends and share. You know, we're all, we all have a good eye for seeing, you know, clouds that aren't really clouds. So what we'll do is we'll scan the perimeter of the area at thermal camera, infrared camera, looking for heat senses. I hear extraterrestrial stories, UFO stories, abduction, contact, downloads. Every single day I deal with this. So it's my norm <laughs> because there was a time years ago where I was afraid and I'd had an experience and there was just nobody, nobody to help uh, e explain or to fill in the blank. So nobody that had been through it and said, hey, you know what, it's gonna be okay. When I say to someone, I, I know what you mean, I do know what they mean or I wouldn't say that. If I say, I know how you feel, I felt something like that, it's because I have. You just, kind of open uh, because you, you don't really you don't believe kind of what you see and but you if you continue to see it then then you have to admit uh, that, that you see it it's interesting to come out here and socialize for one I know you know already like uh, so half the people anyway out here and uh, I've seen UFOs about three or four times throughout my whole life you know and I, so I knew it, it, it's, there's something out there. There's these two stars right It now. made me want to get people to share, people like me. Wow. Wow. wow! It was just a shooting star. That was beautiful. Yeah, it was awesome. So you're going to flow back down into that 17-year-old energy of John. And we can see that they've been visiting you now for some time. And I'm wondering if we were to tap in now to your higher conscious mind, where you're calm and relaxed. There was 15 come in that night. Oh my God, they just scattered like a bunch of quail. Oh, Jesus. UFOs, well, you couldn't keep track of all of them. There were so many. They were just sitting there. And all of a sudden, one of them dropped down at an angle. And he stopped dead still. All of a sudden, he turned around the edge of it. It turned on the most beautiful colored lights. Oh, it recovered the rainbow. Green, blue, red, yellow. Oh, there was colors I couldn't even describe. And they're peaceful. It makes you feel good to see the oh, colors. Oh, beautiful. And all of a sudden, there were three little beings. They were all about the same size. From about waist up, I could see them. Little tiny things. They were looking right at us. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, did they, they waved at me, all three of them. And I don't know why. Uh, and the most peaceful feeling came over me. It just radiated all down through me. Like they were family. Like they were my family, part of my family. Are these the same ones that may have taken your DNA? Yeah, I'm positive of it. Okay. I almost feel like part of them. All right, John, I think that we've gathered some pretty good information here. So I'm gonna come back up now on one, two, taking a deep breath on three. Wiggle your toes for me on four. Eyes open five. There you go, welcome back. Yeah. 
Oh, boy. Oh, I'm okay. I'll be, I'll be okay. I'll be all right. I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm... No, no. Please, uh, have a drink of water. <laughs> Just... I know, John. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why me? <laughs> because you can handle this. <laughs> that there is a higher part of you that can accept this experience. <laughs> you're strong and you're trusting. I love everybody. Everybody on this planet. Too many evil people out there. And that's why you. How are you feeling? Okay. Okay. I always wanted to do this all my life and I never thought I'd ever get done. The experiencer community is tight. Even if the experiences aren't close at all, they understand what it's like to have your reality challenged. And so bonds are created, friendships are formed. Well, I wish that the general public would be kinder to the experiencer and to the abductee to tap into their own compassion and empathy in understanding that these people are suffering you know, the truth is, doesn't everybody deserve a little therapy if they feel traumatized or depressed or confused by something?